So I posted a video the other day about how delving into the shadow can offer us a glimpse into what our superpower is. And I discussed, and I barely touched on it because that was a pretty long video anyway, I touched on a topic that I want to address further today, and that is one of the reasons that people will jump from relationship to relationship or why they may be unfaithful in a committed relationship is because they're trying to fill a void and to hear deeper comments on that then visit that video that I posted earlier it would have been Sunday July 24th of 2016 and I think it's important to accept and acknowledge the fact that there's a lot of dynamics at play when someone is looking outside of a relationship that they have or they don't really, they're almost incapable of spending alone time and just acknowledging that they're single. They might have frequent sexual partners or romantic partners and a love avoidant of course is not going to be willing to commit to any of them, not completely. They may be looking for something outside of themselves to fill a void. And I did discuss this in the charming, emotionally unavailable love avoidant video. But I want to expand on it a little to say that a lot of times when someone is doing that, because an addict and an avoidant can dance between the two, they go back and forth. One might, you might primarily identify as one or the other, but you're still going to experience both of them. And when you are searching for something outside of yourself and you are bouncing back and forth between people or the same person back and forth all the time, regardless of whether you are an avoidant or an addict or you identify that way, one of the things that's really convenient about this behavior is the ability to shift blame onto other people. So whenever you are not sitting in your uncomfortableness, and like I discussed in that earlier video I mentioned about the shadow uh, offering a glimpse into our superpower, that black hole that we have, that void, that empty feeling, instead of exploring it further on our own and not dragging anybody down in there with us because of our neediness, when we can do that, we have to be willing to accept responsibility and some of the things that we're not proud of, like mistakes we have made, beliefs we have had that maybe don't suit us anymore, whatever the case may be, we have to shift a lot of what we have attached our identity to. And that could be a variety of things from hobbies we enjoyed that were not as healthy as we thought to uh, interactions with other human beings that are not healthy and are more harmful to ourselves or to them, or both. That is a form of self-abuse. And when you don't take responsibility, that is also a form of self-abuse because what you're doing is you are continually putting yourself in the situation of being a victim. And you're continually saying to the universe, basically, by your actions and to God and whatever, to the people around you that are observing this, I am a victim. And this thing is always happening to me. And this gender is always, like there's always an absolute, this gender is just this way, like women only want my money or men only want to sleep around. There is consistently something that to gripe about <laughs> and it always has to do with the other person in this scenario and that isn't absolute but it's the truth and sometimes people will give themselves glimpses of awareness and responsibility and say yeah well I know I do this but it's because so-and-so has done this or this happened to me when I was a kid or you know they come up with some reason some excuse yes we do have valid reasons why we have fallen into unhealthy behavior patterns. Everybody has a story. And all I can say is boo-hoo, you know? Get over it. When you're a grown-up and you recognize that these things have happened, then you say, look, I am mature enough to say I will not be victimized. 
I refuse to victimize myself by putting myself in situations with people who make me feel less than who I am. And I'm not saying I'm anything fantastic, but if I feel any less than I do right now, like I feel guilt or shamed to have sex with them even, or to, if I feel obligated to another human being because they've done something nice, have they manipulated me into believing that that's necessary? These are important questions to ask yourself and to take responsibility for some of the things that you put yourself through when you don't just hold the space with yourself sober, without distractions, without another human being to make it feel better, to pacify you and to treat as a band-aid. If we take responsibility then we no longer can be the victim and get attention that way like we are used to because it does give us attention and on some level we feel validated and people feel sorry for you and they're going to do all these things for you and they make, it makes you feel so special and important. Well, at some point after you've gotten all this help and support from people, it's time to say, I can do this for myself now and I don't need to be rescued. I do enjoy having these engaging interactions with other human beings where we are co-creating and we are mutually helping one another on a mutual level. Neither person feels like they're giving or taking more than is necessary or that we really need in that moment. And then you don't have anybody to blame. And uh, sometimes that's scary because we really like to blame other people. We want to blame politicians and we want to blame the media and we want to blame, you know, government workers. And really, ultimately, that's surrendering all of the power that we as an individual have. So how do you want to see the world? How do you want to interact with people? What do you want your relationships to look like? And as opposed to idealizing that, imagine what it would look like in reality. Imagine the imperfections as well. What are you willing to be flexible around and what is it that you just will not tolerate in your life? What is not acceptable? That's, that's okay to have that dialogue with yourself. And to hold that space for yourself. To no longer claim yourself as a victim. To hold your boundaries and not need to build walls to block people out or use anger to push people away. But instead, any anger you have is just to claim your space and not to blame other people, but just say, damn it, I'm not going to put up with this anymore. I don't have to. So, I just want everyone to think a little bit about that since I touched on it in that other video. It's really important that we recognize how much we're putting on other people and how much we're identifying as a victim when we continually use other people to make us feel good about ourselves on any level. We need to nurture and support one another so we know how to feel good about ourselves and have healthy relationships that help mirror that as opposed to expecting another human being to do that for us because there's an important distinction there and it's important to figure that out. Anyway, stay tuned for the next video and keep on loving guys in a healthy way.